I got four hours of sleep last night, okay? Just be nice. <laughs> Hi friends, it's me again. No one really asked for this video, but every time I mention making it, people are like, oh, I can't wait. So here we are. We're gonna talk about how I annotate books. I was very wary of it when I first started getting back into reading last summer. Usually I don't like writing in books. I don't crack my spines. Like I like books to look in pristine condition. By the time I got on like book talk and bookstagram, I was seeing tabs and highlighters and ink pens and people were just marking them up and it looked really pretty. But then I tried it and I was like, ooh, this it's not giving what it was supposed to give so okay <laughs> my annotating journey has changed drastically and it continues to change but I think I found a system that I actually like first we're gonna talk about the tools because a lot of people use different things and I've been exploring with different things as well so let's talk about the ink pens and highlighters you like this little cup I put it in I got this at Avengers campus when I first started annotating, I just used like a regular black pen, the Bic round, round stick, that's what that's called. Anyways, I just used like this kind of pen or I would switch to um, the G2 ones just because I use these for school. The pens I really didn't have a problem with, like their pens. Recently, I found these pens on Amazon. They are the Muji brand. I love these pens a lot because I don't know how to explain it, but like, you know when pens are just like, sharp <laughs> does that make sense like when a pen has like a very pointy tip that sounds so ugh. okay let me stop being a 14 year old but the tip of it is so sharp is my skin dry oh my god it's just very sharp and i like that it's very precise i got these in a pack of three from amazon it's just a gel ink ballpark pen that's what it says ballpoint pen i got four hours of sleep last night okay just be nice <laughs> Highlighters. So when I first started, I just used the Sharpie highlighters because I use these for school and I really like them because they're the clear view ones so you can like see what you're highlighting because I tend to over highlight and then I hate how it looks. The only problem with these is that they don't come in a lot of colors. That led me to picking up the mild liner highlighters. They come in a lot of different colors and I think I only got the 15 pack. One, two, three. Where's my other one? I think they have like a 30 pack. You can buy these in store as well. I think I picked these up from Target. Most of the time they have them on sale on Amazon. Um, so you can get them from there as well. They're double sided. So I do like that you get like the highlighter side. And then if you don't like the like shape of this, I guess, you can switch to the other side and it's more like it's more of like a pen. I was enjoying these, but then I noticed that they really started to bleed through most of the books that I was reading, and I was not a big fan of that. I'm pretty sure it was because I was using more of the darker colors, so the darker colors for sure bled through. I put a pause on my mild liner highlighters, and I switched back to the Sharpie ones. Sometimes those bleed through as well. I think any highlighter will personally bleed through just a little bit, like you'll have a faint outline of it on the next page. I usually don't struggle that much with the Sharpie ones so I do prefer the Sharpie ones but other people say they don't have that problem I don't know what the truth is I do resort to using these mostly if the cover of a book isn't a color that I own in the Sharpie highlighters this little explanation is not going well I'm so sorry y'all oh yeah and I got this cute little like patch patch cancel the whole video <laughs> I got this cute pouch from Amazon as well now we're gonna move on to tabs at first I wasn't the biggest fan because I felt like most of the time it was taking me out of the story and then me trying to be precise with the pen and the highlighter and then putting a tab on it and then making sure the tab looks right it, it was a lot and I was like dude I spent 10 minutes trying to tab this one part no once I got the hang of it and like got over myself um, I actually really enjoy tabbing I think it makes your books look so so freaking pretty it's just it's so aesthetically pleasing I love it you can see how much I love it because I I have a problem <laughs> so with tabs there are a lot of different ones you can try out I got mine from Amazon uh, most of mine from Amazon I should say they come in a lot of like different assortments like my highlighters I like to match the tab to the colors on the cover of the book these are just like different variations of the colors that I have like most of them have the same colors like the greens and the yellows and the blues and stuff but when I was starting out I only like bought this one but it doesn't have a red and at the time I was reading a book where the color on the cover was red and I was like I, I don't this won't do so I found another brand on Amazon and they did have a red one and it comes with a few lighter colors as well so I thought that was pretty cool then this one I think I got these from Shein 
or Sheen or however you say that damn company's name. I also bought these from Sheen. Sheen the place for more neutral colors the brand morandi i think that's how you say it i love the neutrals in this i think they're really pretty and i think when you tap it makes your books look so pretty i don't know what it is about the neutrals but i love it and then they have like the lighter neutral kind of colors the only thing with these is that they most likely come in packs with different kind of tabs this pack that i bought it came with these kind of tabs as well which is fine i usually just like don't use these though i like the full like translucent tab but they also came with um these kind of tabs as well and they have these like longer tabs but i don't really use those so with this brand i knew that i most likely wasn't going to continue buying from them uh just because i felt like i would waste a lot of tabs but i did find them on sheen as well and they're way cheaper and you still get to like change up the colors like if you only want these kind of tabs specifically then you can get those instead of getting the variations that the ones on amazon give you um because i was not a fan of these and i'm like i don't use them so they're just kind of a waste i would also like to add that the good thing about buying these tabs from amazon is that you can buy them in bulk for a pretty good price like i have a lot of these and i got them i believe for like ten dollars i think i could be so wrong but it wasn't like a lot like I wasn't sad to buy these you know if you know that you are only going to use these colors for however tabbing system that you decide to do um then you are getting a good deal but if you want to venture out they do have a lot of fun colors and different kind of tabs on sheen as well so now that I've struggled through explaining the supplies that I use Jesus I'm going to actually show you how I annotate and I'm going to show you how my annotating looked when I first started and how it looks now because it has changed very drastically so let's jump into that first book that I remember annotating when I was just getting back Back into it was people we meet on vacation this is my first copy I have like three but you can see that there are no tabs I tried at one point to do like the little highlighter thing I saw on TikTok once of someone just like highlighting the page that meant a lot to them but I didn't think it would show up well you can see it a little bit so it wasn't really a big fan of that technique but it is unique so if you want to try it that is an option you can use as well also sorry if you have not read this book and you don't want spoilers I don't know how else to show you so uh yeah just don't even look at the words don't look at the words I would literally just go through and if something stuck out to me, I would underline it. I had no care in the world. I didn't use anything to straighten it. I would literally just take a pen and underline it. And at this point, I was using the G2 gel pens. I would highlight just certain words or things as well. I really didn't have like a specific meaning for anything. Like I was just going through, putting brackets around things um, and just marking them off how I saw fit. I used to put stars by things. I don't know what those stars even meant, but sure, <laughs> there really wasn't a system to this I was just going with the flow and it worked out for me so this was the first book that I ever really annotated I believe fast forward to October when I really started getting the hang of it and I decided I wanted to try tabbing well this isn't the first book that I tapped obviously this is the third book in the series so with the first one I think I did the same thing except I changed the way that I highlighted and underlined things in this book specifically I remember vividly because there is one passage that I am going to show you guys that kind of encapsulates how I was annotating for a while before I found this new system that I will also show you later as well sorry if you have not read this series I don't want to spoil it for you I just need this for visual purposes so as you can see we have a lot going on on this page right now and I felt very I felt like that girl okay usually I would only put like a tab per page I don't do multiple tabs per page I get that a lot of people their tabs mean different things so if it's a spicy scene and then he says something cute like they might use two different colors for that personally I found using only one color tab best for me I don't have a color coding system I usually just match the color of the tab and the highlighter two colors that are on the cover and then I called it a day. So this is when I started making my lines look a lot sharper. Like I just took the edge of this, like my tabs, and I took a pen to it and just underlined. And that seems to work for me. I don't use a ruler. So I usually use brackets when there's like description or dialogue that's long and I don't wanna like underline the whole page, you know? So I would use brackets and then just like underline things that I really enjoyed out of that passage. I usually highlight things where I'm like, oh shit, that's beautiful, oh shit, I cried. Just like something that I find important or something that made me giddy or something I thought was funny. So it's kind of hard to explain because I usually 
underlying things that I like as well or things I can relate to. I don't know. Like sometimes I just use my highlighter when it feels right. It felt right to highlight certain things on this page and just underline certain things as well. If that makes any sense, I am really bad at this. So I put my tabs on top of the dialogue or the description that I highlighted or underlined. Um, a lot of people don't. They usually just like put a tab somewhere else on the page. That's fine. Uh, do it however you see fit. I personally like how it looks on top. And then I try to put it all the way in as much as possible so the tabs don't stick out that far because then it starts looking kind of tacky and it doesn't fit on your shelves well. So yeah, I usually try my best to literally have like not even a centimeter out, but that has changed recently as well and we're gonna jump into that. I showed you the OG, what I started with. I showed you how it changed as I was getting more comfortable with annotating and tabbing. So now we're going to go to the system I use now. And also I don't write anything in my books. I just don't like my handwriting enough. Like people who write in their books and have beautiful hands handwriting I am jealous because it does look pretty and I wish that I could be that girl I'm just I'm not so the system I use now is very different you see more colors in here and I'm gonna explain that only using one color tab I noticed that I was going through a lot of tabs with just one color and I wasn't utilizing my other colors so it felt like a waste of money to me and it started with from Lukov with love because I was reading this book and I was like oh shit I am running out of blue tabs but I'm using blue tabs for this book because the cover is blue right and this is still extremely new I literally started this like two weeks ago so with this book specifically I broke it up into blue for the main guy character whose name is Ivan and then I was using red for the main girl character whose name is Jasmine because there was some red in the roses on the cover and then I picked up a brown just for like general things I like usually within uh, Jasmine's internal monologues or just like descriptions that I like or something like in the writing that I could relate to or that I just thought was written very well so that's what the brown is for and I tried to match it with the wrapping of the roses so this gives you a perspective of how I try to like still match the tabs with the cover but also assign different colors to different things and I typically only use three different colors in a book one color for the main girl character another color for the main guy character and just general things I like highlighting and underlining wise I still kind of did the same thing like there's a bracket right there I've also noticed that um, I've been underlining a lot more than I've been highlighting lately I literally only reach for my highlighter when I feel like there is just one specific thing that I really really liked and that it cannot go without being highlighted but for a majority of the book, I've noticed that I tend to only underline now. Oh, so remember how I was saying I'm not one of those girlies that <laughs> put two different color tabs on the page? That also changed as well. These two things obviously meant different things to me. I was like, oh, I like what the main girl said. And also I like this general description of something. So it needs both of these color tabs. I don't do that very often. I thought it was very pretty. And it is one of my most tab books because like I said, I don't usually tab that much, but this one, it was giving. Definitely pick up this book if you haven't. We're gonna do a different angle since you're on my tripod and not on the makeshift tripod I made at the beginning of this video, which included a candle and three books. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically my journey journey with annotating like I said it's changed a lot I've gone from literally just like underlining things to having a system of okay certain characters get different color tabs and certain things within dialogue or description gets uh, different color tabs it just all depends like there is no right or wrong way you do not have to be super precise with highlighting or underlining or anything that's just something I personally enjoy doing because I suck at arts and crafts and then I get to look at my books and I'm like wait I kind of did that it's weird to say that annotating is a process and like it changes a lot for certain people i.e. me but it's fun so if you're just getting into annotating or tabbing or whatever don't beat yourself up if the way that you start out doing it changes or you don't like how it looks like I promise you if you keep at it you'll most likely find a system that works for you I'm gonna go now because you can tell that I'm off four hours of sleep and I haven't had any coffee today I hope this helped and I hope that you find a system for annotating and tabbing that works for you happy reading make good choices um I'm gonna I'm gonna go now yeah <laughs>